Anti-nuclear activists are calling for the permanent shutdown of the San Onofre nuclear power plant in San Diego's North County. Unit 3 was shut down in late January after leaks were detected in tubes carrying radioactive water through the steam generator. And last week we learned tubes in Unit 2 are also showing signs of wear. That reactor was already shut down for routine maintenance. The plant's operator, Southern California Edison, and federal regulators say it will remain offline until the problem is determined and fixed. Joining me to discuss the issue is Ace Hoffman, a longtime activist who's been following the nuclear issue for more than 40 years. Well, Ace, uh, tell me, you, you live in Carlsbad. How close is your home to the uh, plant? It's an apartment about 15 miles south of the plant, so pretty much downwind. Okay. And so what's your biggest fear? Uh, a meltdown, a spent fuel fire, sabotage, tsunami, earthquake, man-made error, human mistakes, engineering mistakes. I'm not sure which one is biggest. Hmm. So, so the environmental group, uh, Friends of the Earth, had a, a very critical report on San Onofre. Uh, they claim changes made to the steam generators is causing stress on the tubes. What's your take, considering you've been looking at this issue uh, as it relates to nuclear for a good 40 years? The original steam generators leaked before they should have. And so they decided that they would have to replace them. When they started the replacement process, San Onofre made the decision to enhance or m improve the design of them. And yet they called it a like-for-like -like replacement so that uh, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission wouldn't pay a lot of attention to what they did that was different. And what they did that was different was they added about 400 tubes inside of each steam generator, which has about 9,500 tubes in it. And they took out a support uh, beam in the center, and they changed little. They changed the alloy that the tubes are made out of. They actually made quite a few changes, and then called it a like-for-like -like replacement, so that it wouldn't be inspected very carefully. And it wasn't. And they put it in, and it didn't work. So the changes were not not like-for-like -like at all. Hmm. And and of course, the public has been warned to expect. Uh, rolling blackouts or brownouts, as uh, they're also known, uh, this summer if the plant remains offline. Um, isn't that an indication it should remain operational? I think it's an indication it should remain offline. For one thing, anytime anything goes wrong at San Onofre, it, it shuts down. It has no choice. It, there's no way you can get into the containment building and fix something while it's running, so you have to shut it down to do any kind of major repair. And also, anytime something else goes wrong, like when we had the blackouts, uh, the uh, fire, the, the blackouts in uh, in September, San Onofre had to go down because it lost off-site power. So it's not really a very reliable uh, energy system. We don't really want to call it baseline anymore. So you're it, looking at a, you want a permanent shutdown. We want a permanent better solution. Yeah, there's much cleaner energy solutions out there now, and they're just waiting to be implemented, especially here in California, where for the last couple of months we've been putting our effort into repairing San Onofre when we could have been replacing it with solar, wind, geothermal. Give me a quick idea of how much power San Diego receives from San Onofre. It's about 19% of our energy here in, in Southern California, in, in the immediate area. But it should be well understood that the state of California thought that um, Californians could reduce their energy usage by 20 percent. A couple of years ago, they asked us all to do that. So why don't they just ask us again? Uh, we didn't really do a very good job of reducing it by 20 percent back then, and, and we've got a lot more iPods and iPads nowadays. I think there's 20 percent of en our energy that we could simply do away with to okay. prevent us from getting right. San Onofre. And we're running out of time, but let me ask you this question. Last week, the NRC, uh, the federal regulators, were in town visiting the plant. You were there. What was your take on that? Their first interest was could they possibly separate Unit 2 from Unit 3's problems and maybe let San Onofre open Unit 2. We told them, we don't think that's a good idea. You've barely even inspected Unit 2. Get, get them in there and inspect it. Well, they got in there and they inspected it, so maybe we had some influence. They found problems with Unit 2, and now they can't open either reactor. So our basic feeling of the uh, of Yasco coming out was that it was a, a good thing and that we were able to influence their decision to keep that plant shut until it's absolutely safe to open. Now, I don't know if we'll get that far, because there is no absolutely safe, but they're keeping it shut right now. And you guys planning on doing some more protesting? Absolutely. On uh, April 29th, the uh, anniversary of, uh, of uh, Chernobyl, a few days after the anniversary, we're going to do another protest up there. We're hoping for thousands of people, and we had hundreds last time. 
And then if that's not enough, before the plant opens, we're going to keep protesting. We'll be out at the site constantly. Ace Hoffman, thanks. Thank you very much.